Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today I wanted to do a beginner's guide on the Indoor 3 Pro. I've got a bunch of upgrades coming up that I want to do and I wanted to do this guide while it's still stock. So before we get started, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. That will really help the channel out. Alright, so first thing I wanted to go over is the differences between the Indoor 3 and the Indoor 3 Pro. So if you're coming from the Indoor 3 or you're looking to buy one or the other, I'm going to go over the differences real quick. Um, the two bigger ones, in my opinion, are going to be the upgraded power supply. It's going to be more efficient and quieter. And then the upgraded reinforcements on the Y-axis. Uh, this is a 40 by 40 block versus I think it's a 20 by 40 on the Indoor 3. Uh, what that does is it provides more stability for the actual Y-axis when it's going when it's traveling back and forth there. Uh, the other two upgrades, um, one of them is pretty important. On the Indoor 3, they have the fan right here on the actual control module. Uh, what that does is it causes problems if any of your actual filament or any scraps get in there. It can actually cause that fan to fail and actually cause issues with the board itself. So um, what they did is they moved the fan from right on top to on bottom. Uh, so that, I mean, I guess with the Indoor 3, it wasn't a big deal because you can print a fan if you know to print it. Uh, it was only an issue if you didn't know to do it. but. Uh, the only downside with moving it to the bottom is there's maybe a centimeter um, gap here. So there's only so much air that can go through there. So hopefully that doesn't become an issue. I guess we'll find out over time. And lastly, um, which if you don't have these side by side, you probably wouldn't even notice this upgrade. But they did change the wheels and nuts here for the uh, bed leveling uh, just to make it a little bit more easy and accurate. So that is a decent upgrade. Um, but like I said, if you didn't actually know what happened, you probably wouldn't even know the difference. So take that for what it is. All right, so let's get started with the overview. We'll start from the bottom up and go over each section really quick. I did do a more in-depth video on all of the components. I'll link that in the description below. Anything I'll talk about in these videos, I will have links in the description below. All right, so we have our control board, um, USB, sorry, not USB, micro card right here. Um, then the USB port right next to it. Uh, the USB port is going to be used to connect this to the computer or to a Raspberry Pi or something along those lines. We have our guide for the Y axis. Uh, we've got our actual control panel here or display. Uh, over here we go back to the power supply. Um, then going down to the actual build plate itself. I don't want to go into too much detail on this or the difference between this and the Indoor 3. but just wanted to point out where everything is at. Um, yeah, so here, obviously, we got the build plate. Uh, we got the leveling nuts down here, or wheels, uh, whatever you want to call those. Um, then going to the back here, uh, we have the stepper motor for the Y axis. Then I'll turn this a little bit here. Um, on this side here, we've got the stepper motor for the Z axis. And then the stepper motor for the X axis is here as well. Um, and then we've got the actual extruder. We've got our Bowden drive for the actual filament. Um, we got our supports for the x-axis and then we've got the filament holder. Uh, so without going into too much detail on either one of these components, that's what all of the actual items are. Um, like I said, if you want to learn more about any of the components, uh, check out the video I have in the description below. All right, so now let's go over some of the key specs. Uh, there are a lot more specs I'm not gonna go into detail here on, um, but the main ones are gonna be your build plate size, which is uh, 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters, or if you're um, working with inches, it's 8.6 by 8.6 by 9.8 rounded, um, which is a decent surface. You can print some um, relatively large objects, but it's not gonna be like your CR10 or anything like that, which has your 300 plus millimeter um, build surfaces. All right, so um, the filament is gonna be 1.75 millimeter. Uh, pretty much any of those will work. I recommend using the patch box. It's probably the, my favorite as far as performance for the price. Uh, it's, again, my personal preference is, but it is the best um, that I've seen. 
Uh, that doesn't mean that there's not better out there, but as far as what I can get a hold of easily, uh, for the price, it's really good. All right, so now let's go ahead and power this guy on. All right, and while that's booting up really quick, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. Um, one thing I did want to note is this is running their own version of the firmware. Um, I want to upgrade this to the latest Merlin that it supports. I'll be doing a video on that coming up pretty soon. Um, I gotta actually walk through the process a couple times myself. I've done it once before on a different printer, but I haven't done it on this printer yet because I wanted to show you guys everything as it was stock. Um, I also did want to point out here that the SD card does come with uh, this little SD to USB drive. Uh, this just connects in there uh, other way and just plugs right into your computer. That way you can actually get the data on the card. Um, if you're using or planning on using Raspberry Pi to control the printer, I guess that's not going to be as important. Uh, just don't lose this because if you do, you will have to buy a replacement. Uh, there's nothing special or proprietary about it. It's just a uh, SD to USB converter, so yeah, there's a lot of options available if you did lose it, but I'd rather not have to spend the money twice, right? All right, so let's go to plug this guy back in. Um, And let's go through some of the basic controls here. Uh, one of the main things you're gonna to wanna to remember is under prepare, you have move access. So if you're trying to um, shift any of these around or if you're wanting to purge some filament through the extruder, you can do that here. So you've got all the accesses. So let's just do Z axis if I wanted to raise this 10 millimeters. And there you go. Um, it makes it easy to really just prep everything if you're trying to get in there to clean or if you don't want to disable the steppers to move things around, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but same thing with uh, the extruder. If you're trying to purge any filament just to get uh, anything that might have been sitting in there for a little while out or if you're replacing the filament or anything like that, um, once your filament's been swapped, which I have done a full video on that, I'll link that in the description below. Uh, you can just do purge and then uh, purge in 10 millimeters here. One thing I did want to point out if you're looking to purge any filament is if you try to um, go to extruder and then move it by 10 millimeters as an example, um, if it's not heated up, it's going to do nothing. So you will have to uh, heat up the hot end in order to actually uh, do a purge or anything related to the extruder. All right, so now let's go back to the prepare menu. Um, next thing that's relevant is auto home. So if you're trying to make sure that the home reading is accurate or you're getting ready for a print and you'd like it to start from over there if it doesn't already, you can do that while it's preheating. Um, so if you go to prepare, just go to auto home and it's gonna bring the extruder down to the front left here. Sorry, I'm going to set front right because it's on my right right now. All right. And then you can, I'll do a video on this. I haven't actually done it yet. But you can adjust the home offsets. So if you're not right on the corner there, if you're printing something that's going to be the size of the bed, you could potentially have issues. So you will want to get that uh, set accurately. If you're only printing smaller things or you have enough buffer on the corners, it doesn't really make a difference. All right, so next thing under prepare is disable steppers. So if you're wanting to uh, move any of these around just for looking for issues or if you're trying to level the bed or anything like that, you do want to make sure you disable the steppers. Um, what that does is it disables the control board inside of the steppers so that it, you can move these back and forth or move this back and forth without having to worry about burning out the control panels and the steppers. Um, I've had it happen before. It's, I guess the biggest pain is taking everything apart to swap them out. Um, but not that expensive if something does happen, but you can avoid it by just disabling the steppers. All right, so the last thing under prepare that I wanted to go over was actually preheating um, the system for either PLA or ABS. All right, so when you go into preheat PLA or ABS, you have three choices. 
you've got preheat ABS or PLA, which is going to heat up the extruder and the um, plate, the build plate. You've got um, preheat PLA end, which is just going to be the extruder, which if you're trying to change filament or anything like that, that's what you're going to want to do. And then you can also just hit preheat PLA for the bed, which will just heat up the bed. Uh, I haven't actually had to do that. I don't know why you'd want to heat up the bed first, um, but I guess it is an option. All right, so in the same settings are going to be available under ABS as well. One thing I wanted to point out is, let's say we wanted to preheat PLA. Uh, it's going to heat up to 185. That's the built-in setting. So if we wanted to change that, we can go into control and then go to temperature. And then on the actual nozzle, it's set it to 185 you can bump that to whatever. So let's just say we want it to go to 200 instead of 185. Um, but that will get erased next time you uh, power on the system. So it's a one-time setting, it's not permanent. All right, so let's go over control really quick. Uh, you've got the temperature, which is what I was just showing you. Uh, you can control temperature for the nozzle bed, uh, your fan speed, and then you can also um, change the presets for PLA or ABS. Like I was mentioning, if we just change the nozzle like we just did to 200, uh, next time it will go back to 185. But if we go into the preheat config for it, we can actually change that to 185, or from 185 to 200 or whatever you want, and it will actually save that. Um, to me, I don't think it's needed at this point. If you had a specific reason, sure you can. But if you're just getting started with the printer, just leave the default settings there. If you have to make a one-off change, you can go ahead and do that. All right, so that covers all of the high-level things that I wanted to cover in this video. It is a uh, beginner's video, so if you had any questions, please leave a comment below, and I can either point you to a video that I've done on that topic or try to answer your questions in the um, comments. All right, so now that we've done that, let's just go ahead and kick off a print. So we would go to uh, print from TF, and there's a couple of default prints that would be on the SD card to begin with. Uh, I think you've got dog, cat, pig, and maybe another animal. Um, and then you also have some of the, spe uh, the user manual and stuff like that. Uh, so let's just go ahead and kick off the dog really quick, just so you can see what's happening. Um, I'm going to let this heat up and then I'll start talking about it once it starts. Alright, so I stepped away for a second and that preheat took a lot less time than expected because we were um, playing around with some of the temperature settings a couple minutes ago so it was pretty much already up to temperature so the print went ahead and started. Um, one thing I did want to point out that I forgot to mention before we started this was bed leveling. I do have a complete video on this. I didn't want to spend too much time in this video going over it, but I did want to just touch on it briefly. So, um, like I mentioned earlier, you'd want to disable the steppers, and then you would actually just move uh, this to each corner, and then adjust these wheels until the actual extruder tip is about a little bit less than a millimeter um, away from the build surface. If you have a piece of cardstock, I was looking to see if I, yeah, I do have a piece over here, like this. Um, it's perfect to get the right height. So, I mean, that's what I use. I, like I said, I do cover this in a lot more detail in the bed leveling video, and I will link to that in the description below. But, I mean, that's a 10 minute process, and I don't want to spend 10 minutes of your guys' time if you didn't need to go over the entire thing. So, so that's the beginner's guide to the Indoor 3 Pro. We talked about the differences between the Indoor 3, the Indoor 3 Pro, went over each of the components at a high level, uh, went over some of the controls, and then kicked off the print and showed you how to do that. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll make sure to get back to you. Sorry guys, I got distracted watching the print there for a second. Um, I will link to everything we talked about in the description below, uh, plus a couple accessories that I feel are worthwhile. And again, I didn't want to go into too much detail on any one of these components in this video uh, because it's meant to be a beginner's guide uh, for somebody who just got the Indoor 3 or is just now getting into 3D printing and just needed a quick overview of what everything was. 
Um, but make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time.